All right. Yay, we're here. All right. This is Wendy Lee. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And happy, happy Tuesday. Woohoo! You guys ready to do a little bit of paper crafting in my studio today? So I appreciate you guys joining me. Um, so what are we going to do today? Super excited. We are going to create a gorgeous, what I think is gorgeous, anniversary card using the, let me get the name right, Elegantly Said Bundle. So I think I mentioned a couple weeks, we did a really, um, we did a fun fold card using this suite. Um, but I said I would show you how to extend the punch. So today we're going to focus, well, we're going to do a lot of things, but we're going to focus a little bit on how to extend your punches in case you didn't know how to do this. So it's super easy. But sometimes we need someone to show us so that we know what we are doing, correct? All right, let me make sure I am in the right place and then we will switch the camera over. Let's see, let's see. It looks like I'm here. Oh, good. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Lee. So glad you guys are here. Oh, it's humid in Wisconsin, huh? Oh, we've got some pretty good weather here today. So I realized as I... Um, went live that I never put any makeup on today. So I'm still in vacation mode, even though we got back yesterday, right? Um, so hopefully you guys will forgive me uh, for not sprucing myself up a little bit for you, right? <laughs> so, all right, let me get back on to the right place. We are in the Facebook group, it looks like anyway. So let's go ahead and switch over and we'll get started on our lovely project. Okay, there we go. That is the Stamp and Die bundle that we'll be using. Let me refresh this page on this other computer. Make sure, oh, it totally went to a different place. Anyway, we'll figure it out. But this is the project that we are making today. And again, I'm going to show you how to extend the punch length because it's this little short punch right here. And so we're going to make it longer for the uh, focal point on our card. And again, we are featuring the coordinating elegantly said stamp set with the elegant tag punch. All right, ready to jump in? So these fabulous products I am actually using for my upcoming bingo. So if you guys, some of you have joined me for bingo before. If you've not joined me for bingo, I'd love for you guys to come, whether you have or have not, I'd still love you to do it. Um, we are featuring this same fabulous stamp set uh, for bingo, but you know, you can use whatever stamp set you have. I try to design the bingo card so that um, it's a little bit flexible and so you don't necessarily have to have the products that I am using, but we are featuring this awesome stamp set and it will, uh, bingo registration ends this Friday. So if you want to join us, please do. We play six games of bingo and there's prizes involved uh, for the winners of the bingo. And then we have a card class. So lots and lots of fun. Oh yeah, bingo is fun, Jennifer, I agree. All right, so let's get started on today's project. So I will go back after the video, you know, Facebook, of course, keeps making changes, but I will go back after the video and make sure that I put the complete cut dimensions supply list so that you've got everything you need to purchase the products to recreate this lovely project. All right, let's get started. So I got my little cheat sheet. So I have got a piece of four inches by three inches of Mary Merlot cardstock, and I'm gonna bring in my Versamark ink. I'm gonna slide that out of the way if I can. And I am going to, did I grab the stamp? I did grab the stamp, yay. So I've got this really large, swirl image. This is one of my favorite images in this stamp set. I'm just going to ink it up with Versamark and we will go ahead, put the lid on that so I don't make too big of a mess, right? We're going to go ahead and stamp right on this layer if I can see where I'm at, maybe. We'll see what happens. I'm a little low in the camera, I apologize. I'll try to remember to get up there a little bit further. All right, so that is stamped in the Versa Mark. And gold powder, what did I do with my gold powder? There it is. All right, so we have some gold embossing powder. So this is from our Metallics uh, embossing powder pack. So I, I think that one comes with silver and gold and copper. I think those are the three that come in that. 
All right, so I just scooped up some of that powder and shook off the excess here. Now, our powders don't come in this big plastic container. They come in a small container and I dump them into a larger container because I find it a little bit easier to use. I'm not quite as messy with it that way. All right, let's bring in our heat tool. So I have an old heat tool for those that don't already know me. Um, so this is a really old one. It is still by Stampin' Up, but I've had it forever and ever and ever and it still works fabulous, so I still use it. Um, the current one has the tip fully covered, so it's not as dangerous as this one. Uh, and it has two speeds on it, so it's kind of nice. So it allows you to easily use it for drying, like if you're watercoloring and need to dry something, or you can use it for heat embossing. So it's very nice. Right, this is loud. I'm gonna hold it about an inch or so away from my cardstock. Give it a moment to warm up, and as it warms up, it melts the powder. Is that not the coolest thing? You can totally see it really good, I hope. So you just slowly move it around. So that's all melted. Perfect. I love it. It's beautiful. Embossing was one of the first techniques I learned, and I, to this day, I still love it. So I don't know how many of you it has a favorite of embossing, but I definitely do. All right, so we're going to go ahead and adhere this sheet onto a four and an eighth by three and an eighth inch piece of gold foil. Now, the foil paper is a little bit more expensive than the regular cardstock, so you could cut the center out since we're covering up uh, a large portion of this. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to take this punch, since we have a punch right here, it makes it super easy. And I'm going to go ahead and cut out right out of the center. Make sure I'm not too close to the edge. I'm going to go ahead and punch out two, if I can get two out of it. Uh, I might be a little close to the edge. Let's just do one. I don't want to get too close to the edge. But now I have a gold foil uh, tag that I can use on something else. And then I don't waste all my paper because I'm going to cover that right up. All right, so we're going to adhere this down. I'm just going to use my stamp and seal and I'm going to put it down flat right onto that gold foil there. I'm going to flip that over. Get that a good press. So you can see my, my adhesive is going through that layer. That's okay, it doesn't hurt anything. All right, so now I've got a piece of the, uh, I'm gonna say this wrong, Golden Garden Acetate. So this is in the January to June mini catalog. Uh, and this acetate is only gonna be around for one more month to the end of June, actually. So we're gonna use this layer on the card front. And let's see, I don't think I grabbed my scotch tape. Let me grab that real quick. I can see where I left it, way on the other side of the room. There we go, got it. So I don't know if you know, but the acetate paper has a film on one side of it. I think it's to protect the surface, but I'm not really sure. But I found that the easiest way to get that film off is with scotch tape. So if I just take a little piece of scotch tape and put it on the back side and then pull, it's going to separate that film right from the acetate. Cool. Have you ever put a card together using acetate, not realized that it has the film on it, and then later your card doesn't stay adhered together? I have done that many a time. <laughs> That's how I knew it had the backing paper on it, because it doesn't tell you anywhere that it has that on there. So I just wanted you to know, fast and easy way to get it off. All right, so next thing I wanna do because you can see the adhesive through the acetate. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this layer right onto the acetate. And what I'm looking at is I kind of want it even along these three sides spacing. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive down one side and kind of lay this down. I'm eyeballing it, doesn't have to be exact. That's the great thing, one of the great things about paper crafting, right? All right, good. So that layer is ready. So I'm ready to bring in my card base. So I've got a piece of five and a half by eight and a half Mary Merlot cardstock that I'm gonna fold in half. And my bone folder along this crease. So did you guys enjoy the um, pictures that I shared from Maui? Uh, it was a wonderful trip. Very, very fun. And I appreciate all of you sending me there. So I hope you enjoyed the pictures and kind of got a feel for all the awesome perks that Stampin' Up! does for us on these trips. It is 
just wonderful. Enjoyed seeing all kinds of friends I've known in the met in the past, as well as meeting lots of new friends. I missed our friends that couldn't go, but um, we made the best of the trip that we could. All right, so now that is down on the front of my cardstock. Great. Next, let's go ahead and I'm gonna do my, my punch part first. So this is the piece I wanted to show you guys how to do. Let's see if I can get that punch back out. Yes, we did. We had a great time in Mary Jennifer. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, very relaxing. Um, you know, we did get to go out on a couple excursions. So I tried zip lining for the first time, a little, did a little bit of snorkeling, a little boating, a little sailing. Um, so that was all awesome. Relaxed massages. Oh, it was just wonderful. Beautiful weather the whole time we were there. Couldn't have asked for anything nicer. So, all right. So our punches, you guys know they fold flat. So they're easy to store and they have a lock on the back. So you're gonna slide that to open it. It's gonna extend the punch. The narrow end is the end that you actually push your cardstock through. Now, because I don't want a punch this size, I want to just punch one end of this. I'm gonna flip the punch over and I'll slide the paper right through. Now, I've tried doing it this way and, and, and I can make that work, but I, if you have trouble sliding it in this way, you can always slide the whole thing in from the front and pull it out. But the whole, the whole reason of, or the whole method of adding length to any punched image is that you just need to pull the other end out. That way you can punch without cutting it short, all right? Now, because I know I have a specific measurement, I've cut my paper so that if I slide the paper all the way up until I can feel it at the top of the punch, it's gonna cut off a little bit more. There's a little more, bit more waste when you do it this way, but if I'm right there at that top edge, I know my measurement is gonna come up consistently, all right? So then all I have to do is squeeze, and now I've got this cute scroll end, and then that piece is cut off. Now, I could do the same thing. I could slide this into the back end of the punch as well and get that rounded edge. Let's see if I can do it with this scrap might be a little bit small. Now I find this is a little more difficult to slide in because I'm on the back end of the punch, but I can do the same thing. I can slide it right down in. So you could actually shorten your image as well. So that's shorter. And I can curve that other end. Fun, right? So just by pulling one end out of your punch, you can change the length and how you're using it. And then you might've noticed I'm a little bit narrower than the um, than the punch itself as is as well. So I think this is a one and three quarters, but I cut mine one and five eighths because I just wanted a little thinner uh, label to what I was doing. So there's a lot of flexibility there. I just wanted you guys to know how to do that in case you've not done that before. Oh, Facebook hid me. No, I'm glad you found me, Jean. Uh, yes. Zip lining. It was fun. I was terrified. I will admit that I was terrified to do it, but I'm glad I did it. I gave it a try. Um, and it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I mean, I got to the point, what's the worst that could happen? You're so harnessed in, even if, if you let go and fell, sort of, you wouldn't fall really. And I decided that if the harness and all that apparatus that I had, they had us all tied into broke, then it had to be my time anyway, right? <laughs> oh, too funny, but I was able to get through it, uh, but it was, a, it was so much fun. So I'm glad I gave it a go. All right, so I'm just going to adhere this right down to the card front with a little stamp and seal. Hey, Amelia, hey, Mary, glad you guys are here. It's good to be home, even though I did love the vacation. It is nice to be home. I'm a little jet lagged. Sleep is, uh, I'm sleepy because uh, it was six hours earlier in the day in Maui than it is here in the East Coast. All right, so my label is flat. Can you believe I put everything flat so far? Crazy, right? That's unlike me. But now that label is down and I'm good there. All right, next what I wanna do is I have got a piece of Mary Merlot that I cut two and five eighths by one and a quarter. And so this layer is gonna go down next, but I want to add the gold cord, which I did not grab. So let me go grab that. And of 
course, it's on the other side of the room. As always, <laughs> seems to be my thing. I mean, everything on the other side of the room. All right, so this cord comes in a gold and silver, and, and here's my spool is kind of a little crazy, comes in gold and silver, and it's part of this whole elegantly um, uh, said suite. And um, so I've got some scraps that I actually had cut off already. So I'm gonna just grab those because I'm, I find this a little bit easy. So if you've worked with the cording before, it can be a little hateful to tie. So I am using little strips and I'm gonna cheat a little bit. So we're just gonna put some adhesive on the back of this to grab the cord. Now these pieces are excessively long. Again, these were scraps I had in my drawer and I'm just going to wrap and adhere the ends to the back. I've got a second one. I'm gonna do the same thing, just wrap it. You could crisscross them. I think I'm gonna crisscross them. Sometimes they set a little bit better that way. Oh, I keep pulling into myself so you guys cannot see what I'm doing. All right, so again, I've got adhesive on the back and I've got this just wrapped around the layer. It's a mess on the back, but that's okay. All right, now I'm gonna take some dimensionals. I've got some in my stash here. All right, so we'll put some dimensionals on the back. Now, if you're concerned about this cord coming up from the adhesive, you can always take a little piece of scotch tape and tack those ends down, and then you don't have to worry about it. You could straddle it with the dimensionals as well if you prefer. I'm not gonna worry about that this time. All right. I think this will be easier to do the next step if I go ahead and adhere it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the backing off and place this right on my card because I want this Merlot to be on the edge. So I'm kind of centered on that label. Maybe that worked. Yeah, a little crooked, but I think I'm all right. Okay, and I'm gonna take this last piece here and string that under and tie my little bow. Now this, this scrap piece that I pulled out of my bin might be a little bit small for me to be tying a bow, but I'm gonna make it work, I think. If not, I can always grab the spool since I do have it here. Ah, a little small. One more time, we'll try it again. My fingers are uh, not cooperating. I'm gonna have to do the wrap around instead of the two loops. There we go. And pull that tight, as tight as you can. Cord, you know, as you know, cord slides not as easy to tie as a regular ribbon is, but it's very, very pretty. All right, so I've got my little touch of gold cord right there. Cute. Let's, let's go ahead and create our sentiment next. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. I, I show you guys these things so that you can recreate them. So yes, definitely use this layout if this helps you. All right, next, let's do our sentiment. So I've got a scrap of basic white cardstock. If you wanted to cut it to shape, you could. Um, it is about two and three quarters by one and a half. This one might be a little bit shorter than that. Because again, I just grabbed a scrap from my bin. I'm bringing in the Mary Merlot ink and the Happy Anniversary Sentiment from this stamp set. And I'm just gonna stamp it right down on this white. Sweet. Put this Merlot away before my arm goes in it. And I am going to die cut this. So I'm going to use this smallest rectangle from the stitch rectangle. So we'll run that through our die cutting machine. And voila, we have our cute sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and put dimensionals on the back of that as well. Change this up a little bit. All righty. I'm getting it slowly, slowly getting it. There we go. And then I'm going to center this on this layer. And oh, I'm very crooked. Let's see if I can straighten that out a little bit. I might not be able to, but I'm going to try. Whoa. One more. There we go, I'm gonna see. It's so hard to see with the camera exactly where I'm at. So I think I'm a little more crooked the other way, but that's okay. 
I'm going to call this done. It's still going to be cute, right? Fun. All right, let's add a little bling to the outside to finish the outside of our card. So I just got some gilded gems. I'm going to sprinkle these on. And I like to work with odd numbers when I add gems. So I'm going to put a couple here. I like changing the size out if I can. Oh, I got the adhesive on that one. Yeah, it's stuck down pretty good. And then I'm going to add one of these larger ones. Oh, it is stuck into that acetate. I'm going to just add one right down here. So since this is all popped up and these are on the flat layer, then it should work out okay. The gems are a little chunkier than some of our embellishments. They got a pretty, um, I don't know if you can see, a pretty high profile to these um, versus some others. So you got to put a scrap piece of paper over the top when you mail this, this card. Pretty, right? All right, let's bring our design to the inside as well. So as you can see on this one, we added a layer of the acetate and then we stamped our uh, basic white layer to add that, uh, that wonderful, elegant squirrel, swirl, swirl, squirrel. I don't know how you say that. I'm gonna call it swirl. All right, there's a piece of white scrap and let's see if I can find my white cardstock layer. So I cut this uh, four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And let's bring back in our Mary Merlot ink in camera here. Yeah, I'm sad the acetate's going to be leaving us as well. We've got one more month that we'll be able to purchase it. Of course, I'm sure that once we see the updated list, I don't know if Stampnet's going to discount any of the uh, January to June mini catalog items, but um, you can probably, you probably would have guessed already when you look at the new annual catalog and you don't see items in it that they are going away. But I don't know if anything's going to be discounted yet. I haven't. Uh, I don't know if they've posted an updated list. I don't think so. We probably will see that the first part of June is my guess. And then we'll know for sure. But yes, that's one to stock up on, uh, as well as the coordinating uh, Fine Art Floral Designer Series paper, because all those designer papers are going away as well. Makes me so sad. All right, so we've got our beautiful image there. And let's see, I've got another sheet of the acetate, again, cut three by four, so it's the same as the front. Let's pull back in our little piece of scotch tape, and we will remove the backing paper from this one as well. All right, just pull that right off. Love that. So cool. Oh, good, they did? Okay. They did post the update. I just haven't checked yet. All right. Get a little bit of adhesive on the back. And then this time, let's go ahead and open our card. So I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. On the front, I centered it along the three sides because I actually wanted this piece offset a little bit to give me a little more room for my label and have that, uh, that image all line up the way I wanted. On the inside, I'm, I actually wanna center it more on the card. So I'm gonna lay the acetate down. It's not, there's no adhesive on it. And I'm gonna lay this. I'm going to try to center it top to bottom, but not left to right. I, I want it centered more on the, the full card versus the acetate. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that placement. Now I can go ahead and flip that over, put adhesive on all of that. And that way it won't show through to the front of the card, right? And we'll get this placed down. Awesome. So then that adds a fun, fun element to the inside. Cute, do you guys love it? I hope you love it. Yes, sometimes things will come back on the clearance rack, um, but yes, it's a super big risk um, to wait and see. But if you run out, then you always have a chance of getting some more. So I, I definitely would get at least one pack if you love it and use it all the time, maybe a little bit more, but um, it's such a pretty paper and you can use either the gold side or the uh, silver side. So, all right. So I hope you guys love this a uh, little different layout. I thought I'd try something a little different, but I really wanted to show you how you can extend your punches because it really changes the look, I think, versus the short, you know, the short image here. So a little bit different, right? 
All right, great. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it and you will give this a go. And if you've not signed up yet for bingo, oh, I sure hope you'll join me for bingo. Again, registration ends uh, this Friday and we've got some fast and easy projects that we're gonna make. We've got three different projects that we're gonna make using this fabulous stamp set. So, all right, have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I will catch you guys next Tuesday for a little bit more paper crafting. Thank you for joining me. Bye for now.